Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Arkansas RC Newbie, and on today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys the changes that I've made thus far on my Generation 7 Red Cat. In the beginning, just didn't have very much flex, didn't have a lot of articulation, the suspension really wasn't there, and I started to look in the manual, and with some easy linkage position changes um, on how that Red Cat should be, it made a world of difference. So I'm fixing to show you guys all of the changes I've made so far. Um, so uh, without further ado, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's get into it. guys here we go with the red cat gen 7 eversport now this thing was under 200 dollars ready to run everything you need in a box right but one of the big issues and this is kind of a big known fact and it still is um, kind of a big problem in 2023 everything that they send you as far as your chassis is concerned most of your linkages are in the wrong position so on today's episode we're going to be going over all of the correct positions or at least the positions that i went over and found on the own owner's manual and everybody should have the owner's manual if you don't just uh, make sure you don't fast forward through this video okay and again guys i'm not a professional i'm the arkansas rc newbie so uh, basically you guys are learning with me or watching me learn all right so uh, before we get started please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button okay let's get some more articulation out of this red cap all right so uh, the first thing we did we started looking at was the rear center linkage positions they're actually in the wrong position and that's uh, per the manual they are actually in the forward bottom position right what I ended up doing was I went ahead and took them out and I mounted them on the top uh, position all the way forward now that was pretty close to the pinion tooth gear I'll show you guys a shot of that here in a second but the manual on this actually shows that it's supposed to be mounted in the center hole there's three different holes it's supposed to be mounted in the center one the reason I didn't mount mine in the center was because I felt I had a little bit more travel in the rear and we'll be showing you guys the shocks here in a second but I went ahead and mounted all the way forward that's an 18 tooth pinion so if you guys want to go anything bigger than the 18 you might want to stick with the center hole so I wanted to go ahead and mount the shock in the forward position as much much as we can to kind of get that triangular look and on the manual actually shows the forward position and it was sent to me with them um, all the way in the back. So you might notice here that I actually have the side linkages taken off and the reason for that is once I unscrewed the shocks from the mount, the linkages just had a whole bunch of tension on them so they would not allow me to move my shocks forward. And what I had realized was actually it was my drive shaft that created all that tension. The drive shaft started to act like it was too long, it would not allow the rear end to move whatsoever. So uh, it's pretty just a little easy fix here and I've seen a lot of videos on this as well um, as far as the Red Cat's concerned. Is a little bit of drive shaft shortening. I got my Dremel out and I took, I'd say about 10, I don't know, 10, 15 millimeters away from it or off of it just to make sure that it did not uh, collide any longer with the, uh, the opposite drive shaft sleeve. So once I got done doing that, you can see here it just moves nice and freely and I went ahead and mounted the side linkages um, how they were and how it showed to be in the book right back in the center holes. And that definitely did help not only moving the shocks, but moving the center linkages up top in the rear. It helped a tremendous amount as far as the uh, suspension travel and the articulation in the rear. And here in a little bit, we'll be putting the wheels back on this thing and showing you guys. So uh, we've got the front inner linkage positions. Kind of the same thing. I had to remove the side linkages because the head... Um, to the center linkage is, is kind of hiding behind that. And again, if you guys look at your booklet, it actually shows that's supposed to be mounted on that little top ear portion. If you guys notice there, again, it's kind of hard to see. It's actually supposed to be mounted directly behind the motor and not down on the chassis. And it's just like Red Cat, you know, when they sent it to me, it's like, the, or send it to anybody, I guess. Um, everything is just kind of fighting against itself. It seemed really stiff and I had figured, well, it's just so stiff because um, it's brand new and it needs to get broken in. No, it's just all the linkages are in the, the wrong spot pretty much. So uh, after moving that all the way towards the front, you guys can kind of see the setup there and how it's supposed to be. Again, you have three different mounting options and I went ahead and left it in the center hole uh, like the, uh, the Red Cat came with. All right, so the next thing I want to take a look at, after moving those linkages, I got a lot more movement out of the front shocks. I got a lot more travel out of there, I should say. But it was fighting against itself once again because the servo mount was actually colliding with my bumper bracket and my bumper mount itself. 
So what I ended up having to do was just remove my bumper mount. So now you guys can see all of that movement that is just wasted because of the bumper bracket. It's crazy. After you move those linkages, you open up a whole nother world, but you can't use it because your bumper mount is in the way. So what we ended up doing here um, is mounting the um, bumper mount upside down. So if you notice here, that bumper mount now, although it is just switched upside down for some better ground clearance, um, it is still colliding with the servo a little bit on the sides and that servo horn. So I had to do a little more modifying and um, I just went ahead and got my Dremel out and took away some of that material up front where it was colliding with the servo horn and we've got so much more movement out of there. Another big deal was these little bars or the little mounting brackets, whatever you want to call that, that slide through your bumper mount. Those were hitting the servo as well. So I just clipped those guys off and now we get the full potential, full travel with no obstructions whatsoever. And the servo horn just slides perfectly inside of the area that I ground down. So we get all of that movement back and we should have a little bit more ground clearance whenever we get ready for that newbie uh, rating system that we've been looking at. But so much more movement and articulation up on the front. Again, we're going to be putting some wheels on this thing and showing you guys. Um, but man, that's pretty much the uh, free stuff that you can do as far as your travel and the whole flex and just using up what the Red Cat um, has got. You know what I mean? No, nothing, no money involved whatsoever. This kind of was an issue since I did move my bumper mount upside down to get just a little bit more clearance on the front end on how I think it was intended to be. I had to uh, shave a little bit, cut a little bit off of the uh, Red Cat's body just so I could actually get it to mount. And here we go. Let me show you guys the articulation with the wheels and everything on there now. Look at that flex. That is great. You're getting used up all the suspension travel that the Red Cat came with. I mean, look at that, guys. So much better clearance on there. It's so much looser. It's not fighting against itself anymore. So if you guys were having some issues beforehand with your Red Cat, um, you know, watch this video a couple times. Um, hit that like button for me, please. Hit that subscribe button for me, please. And um, again, on the next episode, we will our, that's going to be featuring the Red Cat, we're going to be taking this thing out and doing a little newbie rating system where we're going to be uh, it's going to be the start of a whole new thing. We're going to be rating all of the crawlers from here on out and just kind of making some categories and seeing what the score is. But guys, I appreciate you watching as all. Always, I'm the Arkansas RC newbie, and guys, I will see you on the next episode.